So now in this video, we're going to look at the active and the passive buzzer. So I see these in electronics kits pretty commonly. I think I got them in three of my kits. The active one seems to have this paper on here that says I remove seal after washing. And uh, so in any case, you can leave that on or whatever. But right now, they uh, look like identical components. So this is the active buzzer. And one way I've noticed you can determine that is uh, you have it encapsulated down there and uh, let's put it back on there make sure we got polarity right and uh, the uh, passive one it's open on the bottom you can see a little bit of uh, wiring there and that's really the only difference I've noticed from the uh, physical aspect of it I should probably move it over a little bit uh, but in any case the uh, active buzzer you just apply power to it directly as you can see the passive one I have the circuitry here I'll get into that coming up but in any case we have 5 volts there we can just directly give it 5 volts and as you can see it's really loud so I'm just gonna quickly turn it on and off and we can move this jumper over here now and now it's plugged into the 3.3 uh, volt slot 5 volt there 3.3 volts there and it's not as loud but it's still uh, pretty loud and I've tried adding some resistors see if I can get the volume down and really not much luck here's a 220 ohm resistor and uh, I noticed if I do a higher resistance it doesn't work I don't even think it'll work with 3.3 volts I may be wrong yep that's too much for 3.3 volts but I'll put it at uh, 5 volts there and now you can see it's beeping it's not near as loud as 5 volts without it I think it's even a little quieter than it was at 3.3 volts uh, directly to the uh, power rail so this will probably be the setup I use but we don't need the resistor but it helps lower the volume so now the passive buzzer, they are both polarized. As you can see, there's a plus up there that needs to be on the more positive side of the circuit. But uh, passive buzzer is not as uh, straightforward, as easy. But let's turn the power on. You can hear kind of a rattling noise. I have this trim pot here so that I can make some adjustments. So you're going to see when I turn away from this resistor, I'm going to add resistance and this crackling noise is going to slow down and if I turn it towards the resistor so I'm lowering the resistance of this and I can turn it all the way to the resistor you can see that we have a much faster crackling noise so now this is a 555 timer in a stable mode and which means it doesn't stay in one position so basically it's Turning on and off is the simplest way to put it. We're going to take the uh, 10 microfarad capacitor here. Now we're going to use a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. So a lot smaller. You could also think of it as a 100 nanofarad capacitor. If you want to, let's turn the power on. And so now it's, uh, now it's beeping. That's because it's actually going on and off a lot faster so let's turn this resistance down which is going to make it go even faster and we get a higher pitch noise and I actually can't hear it right here so if you can hear that you got better hearing than, uh, than I do but uh, I had a few ear surgeries so I lost some of my hearing especially for tone so I bet you heard that but I didn't hear that so I tried a smaller value capacitor, I couldn't hear anything. Maybe it was making noise, maybe it wasn't. Uh, let's turn it uh, more resistance to slow down the uh, tone. And uh, so in any case, there you can see that uh, we can use a capacitor to uh, change the uh, tone. So let's take that capacitor out here. We could also adjust the uh, resistance more. Now we're going to get an even larger capacitor. So this is a 470 microfarad capacitor to uh, really slow things down and uh, right now you just hear it click 
every once in a while. So this is kind of like a uh, metronome, a timed click, and we can speed that up. And uh, of course slow it down to uh, quite slow. So we could even use an even higher value resistor here to really slow things down, but I think you get the point. So now I'm going to give a visual demonstration and uh, you can hear the pace of the click there. So I'm going to swap out the uh, speaker. The LED is also polarized so the longer lead the anode needs to be more positive. So I'll put that up there. Shorter lead cathode will go down, down one row and then uh, we'll take a resistor. Complete the circuit. And now you can see that the LED is uh, flashing at the same pace as the buzzer was. One thing you'll notice is that the LED is on very briefly and then off. That's because it is controlled by the capacitor charging and discharging. It has to charge through that resistor, this uh, trim pot, whatever resistance we set it at that, and then through that resistor. So the total amount of resistance is going to control how long it takes to charge. And so we know that while the LED is off, the capacitor is charging. And then while it discharges, it only discharges through one resistor, so it discharges much faster. That's why the flash is much faster. And now let's uh, take that one out of there and pop this one in here. Ideally, you'd want to turn the uh, power off, but in uh, any case, there you can see it's kind of flickering. Looks kind of like a... Uh, little fire according to the camera and uh, let's slow it down and there you can see much more that uh, we can flicker it really fast and I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera we'll see when I process the video and I'm blocking the light but in any case let's uh, turn it to where it's faster and now you can see that uh, it's flashing really fast but it's flashing so fast that it looks like it's just a steady light. So that was the same thing with the uh, passive buzzer. When it was going slow enough you heard clicks but as it sped up sooner or later those clicks got fast enough where they just blended into what sounded like just a steady tone. 